Hi everyone, I'm Steve, here with a special guest, James Bradley. Thanks for being with us, James. Thank you very much. All right, so, James, you're older than me, and uh, you're a beast. So, uh, I want to I wanna find out what your lifestyle has been. When I'm assuming you started exercising a long time ago. Tell me about that. Yeah. When was that? Um, I'm probably going to say when I was 18, I started uh, going to the gym. Actually, uh, I uh, uh, I was with some friends and we had like a, a kind of like a strength contest, you know, young kids. And we were doing like push-ups and stuff. And that kind of exposed me to like the physical therapy of, you know, kind of working out. And from there, I just kind of latched onto it. It was something I was interested in. And I was convinced at an early age that uh, longevity was exercise. They worked hand in hand. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I, I, I see in the gym and I'm always going, man, that guy's a freak. Uh, and because you're 65, I'm, I'm 61. You got me by four years. Um, so I started working out also as a teenager, but I, I mean, you, would you say your motive was different back then? You weren't thinking, hey, I want to live to 100, but what was your motive? Was it to be stronger? Was it to look better? It was just fun. You know, you wanted to compete and be stronger than somebody else. What was your motive when you started? Oh, uh, I'm going to probably say that it was to look better for sure. I wanted muscles. Actually, it's kind of weird, um, you know, coming from a mixed racial family, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger was an inspiration for me when I realized what weight lifting was and training. And I never wanted to, I was never inspired to compete, but I wanted to look as good as those guys. And that's what I kind of did. Franco, and I think there was another go, another guy, Cobbs. He was a black guy. Yeah. But anyway, as a kid growing up, I was a little bit inspired by that. Yeah, I think that's probably the main reason that people really get into it. You know, they want their butt to be big and muscular, or they want big biceps or big chest. You know, when they take their shirt off in high school or college, you know, they want to impress the girls yes. or whatever. So, I, and and vice versa. So I think that's kind of a common, that, that's kind of what I did. You know, I was playing uh -huh. sports. I wanted to improve that, but it was really, I guess, more vanity when I first started. Now uh, we're just trying to maintain. So just kind of give me a, an idea because you're really strong. So give me an idea of how your mentality has changed as you've aged and how your workouts have changed and, uh, are, are your reasons for exercising, have they changed? Just kind of give me a rundown there. Um, yes, I'm going to say that my reasons definitely have changed. As you get older, um, you become more conscientious about your body, what you're doing, especially if you're in weight training. Um, I think I was watching one of your podcasts where one of your guests were talking about uh, the mentality of it and form and technique and so forth. Well, again, once you get into weight training, um, aside from you doing it to look good, um, you develop a certain regimen about yourself. It makes you structure your way of living. And then as you get older, that same structure becomes uh, your regimen for the rest of your life. Uh, especially if you can see the results and it's an obvious thing and you feel better, you look better. It's just an all around blessing, I would say. So how, how many days a week do you work out? Like in the gym? Well, now, because um, I've already gotten to the point where I want to be, it's more maintained. Um, I would say at least three times a week as far as strenuous to the muscle. And I spend the other four days uh, doing um, 
cardio, not necessarily in the gym, but walking. I put in a lot of steps because you can't maintain your upper body if you don't have a solid foundation. And that's why I try to tell people, you're going to get muscle. Muscle is going to grow. But you have to condition your body to be able to accept the muscle. And the only way to do that is you have to have strong legs. Your breathing has to be good. You have to kind of eat right, get some rest. It's, 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 most of the weight training is without the weights. It's more of a mental commitment to yourself. You know, um, and you, you're telling me about some of the other activities that you do, but you have a lot of lean body mass on you. You have a lot of muscle. And as we age, just every pound of muscle that we can either put on or even maintain has a lot to do with our health and how our bodies yes. function. And yes. you've got a lot. And, you know, you're talking a little <laughs> bit about muscle memory. And, uh, <laughs> yes. you know, once it's there, that muscle memory's there. But now it's a matter of maintaining it, keeping your flexibility. And just being able to, you know, you don't want to be walking hunched over and all that stuff. No, so no. Um, that's something I've noticed about you is, is your body composition. You've got a lot of lean body mass and that allows you to eat more. That allows you, it, it helps with when your metabolism is work, when your metabolism is working like that, it helps you be healthy in every area. And I'm assuming yes. that you know, your, your checkups with the doctor go pretty well. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny that you should say that because I just had a physical and uh, uh, my testosterone level is, is I'm in, like an 18 year old. Um, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to know what your doctor says to you after, uh, after, after he gets all the blood work and he does all the, Tess, what does he yeah. say to you or she? <laughs> she says you're still healthy as a horse. That's what she says. She says I'm healthy as a horse. Um, I, I assume I can run a, qu I can run a quarter mile. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, seriously, uh, your diet has a lot to do with it. You spoke about it in one of your podcasts about supplements and eating right and getting rest. And you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, um, I try to eat well. I try to stay with lean meats, vegetables, which is a really important thing. Plant-based foods. Uh, but you can, don't get me wrong, you have to give your body some of the other lipoproteins in order for it to balance out. And another thing too, um, as long as you're working out, you can coordinate your testosterone levels to help you stay lean. That's why I'm lean, because my testosterone levels are very balanced out. Um, I think you spoke about this before, about hormones in your body, and when you're balanced out, even if you weren't before, you can actually get yourself in that position. It's just a matter of you adjusting your diet a little bit and adjusting just your standard daily routine. And if you do so, your body will reward you, I assure you, obviously. What, um, what did your, I'm just curious, did your doctor tell you what your testosterone was, what the number was, or did she just say you're like an 18 year old? No, she said that my testosterone level was, I think it goes from um, 0. Point something to 4. She said my testosterone level was like uh, 1.2, which is... She, maybe she's like, talking about free testosterone because it goes from like 300 to 900. Something oh, like I don't know the exact, I don't know the exact number of what it is. Um, but she just said it's like an 18 year old. Yeah. She said it's like an 18 year old. I don't really know the doctor, the number term for that, but she said that, um, my body is actually continuously, uh, burning. So 
you know, my machine's still good. I, I mean, I, I equate that to some of these classic cars I see around here that are running just so smooth, like a hum. And it's the same thing. If you keep your engine right and you maintain, you can get a lot of like longevity out of your physical. So. And you know what? I'm, I want to tell everybody out there, the reason for that is the resistance training and you get good sleep and you have good healthy habits that's helped keep your testosterone elevated up okay yeah all right supposed to be you know uh -huh. up into a good range and I'd, I'd be curious to see what it is next next time i see you in the gym i'm gonna find out what yeah i'm gonna I, I i will uh i will uh i will um i'm gonna ask my doctor i'm gonna i'm gonna ask her for that exact number so i'll know and i'll, I'll tell it to you the next time i see you I, I know for a fact that um, for me, at this point in my life, being 65, wanting to live forever, which I know I possibly can't, but I could live a really long time. Um, it's just a matter of applying those simple little things. But you have to want it. Working out and just being physically shaped or just healthy, you have to want it. That is the most important part of the whole thing. Sure. How many people do we know that go to the gym? They say, oh, I want to work out. And then they go to the gym, they get this membership, they buy a couple of outfits, and they come to the gym and they work out for 30 days. And then they lose that interest. It's just not there because it's something that they're starting to do repeatedly. And it's just not, they, it's just not, <clears throat> They don't embrace it enough. It's more mental than anything. If you want it, you can do it. Anybody can do it. A fat guy, a skinny guy, an overweight woman. Anybody can do it if you just start. I always say, this is my one rule. Just put one foot before the other. And you start from there. You're not going to get all the results in one day, two days or maybe even a month. But I can assure you, every time you do some sort of resistance to your body, it is a benefit. And if you continually do it, you'll see more of a benefit. Because you have to understand, when the body starts to change, it changes from within. You don't normally see it on the outside right away, but the inside is changing. And sooner or later, it changes just enough that now you see it from the outside and you notice those different things. That's the reward. And the main thing, again, is you have, you have to want it. I want it. I want to be 95 and looking like this. I made it to 66. I'll be 66 this year. So I want to, I want to look like this when I'm 86. This is the truth. I have to tell you this one quick story. Long time ago, I'm going to say 30 years ago, I was reading a magazine and there was a guy in there. I forget where he lived, but the guy was, he was cut. He was, he was just, man, this guy was pound for pound. Great. And I started reading the capture and it said that he was 86 years old. It blew my mind. And ever since I saw that, I committed myself that I was going to do everything in my power to stay fit, to stay healthy, to be just an inspiration that someone could see me and say, wow, look at that guy. And then when I tell them how old I am, then maybe that light will click in their mind and say, wow, I could be like that as well. So it's pretty much shown by example, you know, and so if I can be a positive example for someone that may watch this cast, this podcast, and have wanted just that slight bit of inspiration, um, take it from me. All you have to do is embrace it. All you have to do is really want it. But you have to look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, is that what you want? Is that what you want to look like 10 years from now? 
And if that's really what you want, then you're going to apply yourself. Even if you get up in the morning and it's like, oh, I have to go to the gym. You, you already know that once you get to the gym and you start your workout, you're going to feel a thousand times better because you've already achieved something again. And again, like I say to anyone, just put one foot before the other. That's you know, what I got. It's inspirational. And, you know, we were last time I saw you in the gym, we were talking a little bit. And what, what you're really talking about here is a lifestyle. You have a certain lifestyle yes. that you're committed to. And that takes some discipline. I'm just kind yes. of paraphrasing the advice you just yes. gave to people out there is you have a lifestyle, things that you do, rules that you follow, and you have the discipline yes. to stick with it. And if all, all of you out there, you know, and you young kids out there, you're going to be here someday. Um, so you, you, you've got to just have those healthy habits and you just got to do them. And it, for me, it's fun. It's easier when it's fun. And I know it's fun for yes. you. But you oh, for sure. But didn't you say you roller skate or something? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I'm originally from Long Island. And um, in New York, growing up, we roller skated. We roller skated in the parks. We roller skated from one borough to the other. Uh, we, that we were physically involved with that. And... Um, Part of that was, I'm, I'm sure everyone has seen disco dancing before. So, you know, to be able to roller skate and dance and, you know, it's all a physical thing. And again, you rely on muscles, you know, that, you know, um, you condition. You know, and then when I was younger, I didn't realize I was conditioning myself for that. But it ended up being that for me. And, yeah, so... Uh, that it has been a physical journey and I, 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 have enjoyed it though. Um, I have no regrets. And it was something I wanted to say that was like, um, if, if, you know, again, if you really want it, you're going to apply yourself. You're going to make it an important factor of your life. For me, it's life and death. Because I feel like now, after I've gotten to this point, if I stopped, I would probably lose my mind. I'd probably go crazy because the health and the fitness, and it, it also gives you a better thinking platform. For sure. And what I mean by that is your clarity in terms of perception around you just you know, your dexterity, your your re reflexes, everything becomes really in tune and you become in tune with yourself. You know, you uh, here, here's something that I can tell about you and, and something that we talked about in the gym also. You feel good. And we both talked about, it's important for me too, to yes. feel good. I want to yes. feel good. I don't want to feel like, oh, I'm going to tip over, you know. Um, yes. I, I want to feel good. I don't want to feel sick. I don't want to be limping. We talked about, you know, people that are 45, 50 years old limping around in the grocery store because they haven't been active or they've had injuries and they haven't fixed it. I don't want to be one of those people that's limping around in the grocery store and I know that you feel really good. So I know you you know living forever is one thing but you don't want to live forever if you don't feel good, right? And you feel good. Oh yeah, uh, um, <laughs> it's funny you say that. Uh listen, every day when you wake up and you look in that mirror, you ask yourself, look good, feel good. Because if you feel good, everything else is just a part of the day. Your disposition, your attitude. Someone could piss you off, but it wouldn't even piss you off. Because you feel good about yourself. You feel good about what you're doing. When you walk around the street, just things just seem a little more brighter. I feel bad for people who have... 
who got hurt or something like that. And it allowed that particular situation to deter them from continually taking care of themselves. And they let themselves go. And now they got a bad leg with a brace or they're having breathing problems. And now instead of address, addressing it and doing some cardio exercise, they're on an the air tank and they're 40 years old. That's, that's, that's uncalled for. I, I admit that in our day and age now, uh, the attitude has changed, but it's never too late for anyone if that's, if you want to better your life. And again, like you say, Steve, you know, when you feel good, you look good. And it's necessarily on the outside. It's on the inside as well. Uh, again, I will reiterate the fact that change starts from the inside. Once you start that process and you're committed, I can guarantee you that you will see the results on the outside. One thing my dad always told me, he wasn't wise on a lot of things, but this is one thing he was very wise about. What you do now is not for now, it's for later. Hmm. And later is when you need it. When I was working out when I was 18, 20, when I was deadlifting and having competitions with my friends about how many sit-ups we can do and stuff like that, I didn't realize it then. But all of those things are the backbone and the foundation that I stand on now, where at 65 years old, I can still bench press 350 pounds. That's uncalled for, but it's true. I'm not on any magical elixir. I'm not on anything other than that you can buy in the grocery store, like orange juice or tomatoes. What I am on is the fact that I've set this regiment for myself. I made a commitment to myself and I apply it and you have to apply it. And that's it. All right. So you, you kind of answered that, but I just have one more funny question. I sure. Can sure. Imagine. You know, what do people's cause and now James is, um, works out at the Carson city, uh, fitness for 10. That's he's in our studio at Carson city. What do, <laughs> what do people, woo, woo, this people, is my spot, man. 10 years. Yeah, I love this place. Everyone's, you know, every gym has its own personality and you get to know the people and it's like family, right? I sure. Mean, yes. That's your place. Yes. And that's where I like to work out too. But what do people say to you in the gym when they see you working out or they see how big you are? What do they do? I mean, do they just look at you and do they ask you how much you bench press or what do they say? You, you get some of those kind of questions. Um, <laughs> Um, from some of the guys, I can always see a guy, he'll look over when he sees me repping some plates and I'm just trying to get my, my chest presses in. Um, a lot of people come to me in awe because they can't understand how I'm, you know, doing this where I, again, I'm just applying, I'm doing what I love. I've practiced it enough. Um, I like being an inspiration for the people in my gym. Um, I have a lot of friends here. Again, I've been in fitness for 10 right here across the city of Airview. Ooh, ooh, 10 years I've been in this gym and I've watched people come and go. And I've watched a lot of people apply themselves and make that change. And I am one that would come and say, hey, I've watched you for a couple of years now. You're looking really good. You're making good progress. Keep up the good work. If I can be an inspiration for you, I always will. Um, the only thing that you could possibly get from me is um, a willingness to be consistent. I try to, I, I try, I smile at everyone here to let you know we are a family. We, we will support you. We have excellent, excellent, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, uh, Shonda, Michelle, we have excellent um, um, trainers here who will work with you no matter what your condition is. Um, it's really important in a gym that um, there is a cohesiveness between uh, the staff, 
as well as the uh, person coming in to work. Because, you know, here, they're very conscientious. No one would let you get yourself hurt. They will definitely give you a plan to work with. Um, and one thing I like about me is that people see me work out and they will come to me and say, hey, I've seen you on that machine. I'd like to use that machine. What will it do for me? Well, you go through the explanation. Even though everything here is documented and there's a lot of illustration, um, um, there's a uh, there's a uh, there's an understanding here that you, you know, you can learn. Uh, people will show you the proper way to do things because, again, and Steve, like in one of your other podcasts, form and technique are everything. I don't care if you lift a thousand times, a thousand pounds. If your form and technique is not correct, it will never hit that muscle. So that's one thing I got to say about Fitness for 10. Ooh, ooh, Fairview, we love it. They will show you the proper way to do something. And again, back to you. If you're committed and you embrace your workout, you're going to get the results. So people do ask you for advice and they ask, oh, yes. do they ask you, what, what's your age? Do they ask you that or they just figure you're 40? They, they figure I'm a young guy. They and when I, 40. some people I like to blow their mind, I tell them, you know, just to see what their reaction is. And I see some people actually, when I say it to them, they say, wow, uh, wow, he's older than me. <laughs> uh, and, you know, and, and then, and then I would assume that it comes, okay, so maybe if I apply myself, I can get like that too. Maybe not as big as me, because a little bit of that is genetic. Uh, but for the most part, uh, the form, the, the 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 after effect the shape um, comes with again a certain consistency and a certain amount of you that's what you want you know um, I I I I, I, did, there's, I can say a million wonderful things about fitness for ten but it all boils down to yeah we might have a great gym we might have great staff we might have a great atmosphere, but we also want to have great participants. And the people who come here and sign up for a membership, you are the important person. You you make the difference here. And we would hope that anyone that comes and works out here embraces uh, the willingness to feel better, look better, and want to be healthy. Well, I have to say, James, it is a pleasure knowing you and the pleasure knowing you, you as well. Steve. You definitely are an inspiration. So thank thanks you for all much. your comments on this and we will talk to you soon. Yeah, yeah. Steve, I love your podcast. I I've watched I, I binged. I think last week I binged <laughs> and I watched like twenty <laughs> back to back. Um you're very informative. I, I like the show, and I just want to thank you for having me on here and keep up the good work. All right. Well, we appreciate you, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, brother.